Go ahead. Let's go ahead and continue with this. This is actually questions two through five stacked up into one. And so uh, what we're going to be doing with this one is we have two projects that we're going to be comparing in this scenario. Okay. So for each project, we have the initial investment laid out, uh, the life of the project in years, and the salvage value. For both of these, there's no salvage value. So uh, to begin with, we're going to have we're going to compute each project's annual expected net cash flows. And that's something pretty similar to what we did before, but we can kind of take a shortcut in this one because we actually already have the net incomes for each of the product products. So we can go ahead and plug in their net incomes, just pull them right down. And then what we need to do is get to cash flows. So remember what we did last time to get to cash flows from net income, we had to add back in our depreciation expense, right? So we are going to add that back in, and then that will give us our expected net cash flows. So that's pretty simple. That's kind of some, that's some of the stuff that we did uh, previously. Now the trick is, is the depreciation expense is not already calculated for each of these products. So you're going to have to go up, and you're going to have to calculate the depreciation expense using straight line depreciation. So it's pretty straightforward. We're going to uh, take the member in the initial investment, subtract any salvage value, which there are none, divided by useful life. Okay, and the useful life is different for each. So make sure to um, factor that in as well. So the depreciation expenses are definitely going to be different for each product. Product. Let's go down to number three now. So number three, we're supposed to determine each uh, project's payback period. So we, we already know uh, what the cost of the investment is. That's pretty straight up. That's up at the top. And that'll be our first uh, number for each of these projects as we do that. Now the denominator, uh, we've already calculated as well, and that's the annual net cash flow. So we just calculated that. So we're able to divide the cost of investment by the annual net cash flow, and then we'll be able to get our payback periods in years. So that's number three. Number four, we're going to compute each project's accounting rate of return. So we have to say, okay, what, what is accounting rate of return again? And we know that it's the annual after-tax net income, which is up top. We, the, they already calculated that for us, so we can pull that in from up top. Our net income, not our cash flow, our net income, right? And then we've got to do an annual average investment. And in this case, the annual average investment, we don't have to worry about salvage value, but we do take the initial investment, add in the salvage value, which is zero, and then we divide by two, okay? So we're basically halving the initial investment as our annual average investment. We're gonna divide that into the annual after tax net income. That'll give us our accounting rate of return. Number five, we are going to determine the product's uh, net present value using a 7% uh, as the discount rate. So we're able to plug that in to our interest rate is 7%, right? And we're gonna do that for each project. So each project is gonna have different N or periods that we're gonna plug up on top, right? So from, for example, mine had, let's see here, uh, for project Y, it was six year life. But for project Z, it's only a five year life. So we're gonna plug those both in. Okay, and we're gonna use those. So this is project Y is a six year life, I think, right? Project Z was a five year life. Same percentage for each. And so we're gonna go ahead and plug those in uh, using since we don't have salvage value, the only one we're actually gonna to have to apply the present value to is the cash flows, right? So we're gonna do our uh, present value of annuity of one. And that will be applied to the cash flow for each prod project, right? That factor, whatever factor we get from the table that will be able to just flow straight down into the present value of cash inflows 
Our initial investment will be present value of cash outflows. We're going to subtract that from our inflows, and that will get us our net present value for each of the pro each of the projects. Okay, so that's that's the uh, that's number two, three, four, and five. So that'll should be pretty straightforward there.